Hello? 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 <laughs> what you got? Blondes have more fun. Agree or disagree? So... I was blonde for a while. Like, a, a long, long while. Like, you, the majority did you of have my life. more fun wow. when you were blonde? I did a lot of things while I was blonde. I did have a lot of fun. But I don't necessarily think that that's a valid... Like, I think it depends on the person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say disagree because I'm brunette now and I still have the same amount of fun. I have never been blonde. Right. So. Yeah. No. I don't know. I I feel like blondes just have that um, stereotype of being like super bubbly and Ah, you know and that's why but it's not it depends on the it depends on Uh, the Camping sucks. Disagree. No, he's are we talking about tent camping? I forgot to turn the sound off on the I guess it doesn't Haha. Ha. <laughs> um You think tent camping sucks? I feel like tent camping kinda sucks a little. Oh. I would do it. <laughs> I have done that. Like just because I, I like think it kinda sucks doesn't mean I wouldn't do it. I mean, nobody enjoys sleeping on a hard floor mm-hmm. or on the ground, but it's fun. Just hang out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I like that. Like, I like going out, going out to like do like the mountains thing. Like, if you get like a cabin and you do like the mountains kind of thing, right? Like, that's nice, right? So you would never go backpacking. Do you think I'm going to make it backpacking? I'm just saying. <laughs> just asking. You think I would su- survive? Maybe. I backpacking? Preheating the oven is unnecessary. Disagree. It's 100% necessary. I usually preheat the oven. It's necessary. Unless I'm like reheating something like if i'm reheating pizza and i'm putting it in the oven you... i solely use the preheat like when it hits temperature i take it out here's my question are you putting the pizza or food item in cold yes see that makes sense to me because it's gradually increasing the items temperature bringing it to room temp and then you're putting it in i think that if you were to just throw room temperature pizza in the oven I'm just expecting to see like paw hair under the door <laughs> um but if you just go to put like room temperature pizza in the oven and it's not preheated like Do you know what it's gonna take forever so when preheating the oven yeah i i have this habit and it's, like, been a lifelong thing because, like, my mother does it, so then I did it, where I, like, will put dirty pans, if I haven't cleaned them yet, in the oven. Okay. Okay. And I am in the habit of when I'm going to preheat the oven, I open the oven first to check if there's anything in there, and then I hit to start, Yeah. you know? Ryan doesn't do that. So the number of times there have been things in the oven and he just starts preheating and walks away and then he comes back to the oven and i'm like there's pans and stuff in here and they're all now like hot and yeah yeah and he gets really annoyed with it but i was like i use it because where else in this tiny kitchen are we gonna put the stuff while i'm waiting to clean it because lord knows he's not gonna wash it i have to wash it right so I put it back in the oven. She's smelling in the, she under is. the door and the, let her in. Let her in. Mom is breaking. Can 
we help you? Oh, she was pacing back before she was in your room. You were pacing? Hi, sweet girl. You can even see your mother. <laughs> there she is. You gotta lay down. You lay down, baby. Are you gonna lay down? It's okay. Come here. You wanna come this way? You gonna go that way? So I go girl. I am the type of person that while I'm cooking I clean. Like I clean while I cook. So any um like baking dishes, trays, anything like that. If it's something that I can't clean while I'm cooking the rest of the rest of dinner, I um, clean it immediately after. And then usually the oven is still hot. So what I do is I put the um, like sheet trays and stuff mm -hmm. in the oven right after I wash them. And then it evaporates the water and dries them for me. See, I will try to clean as I go and I don't always succeed. Brian does not at all. I wish that I would have taken a video or pictures of what, of what my kitchen looked like after he made all those cookies and banana bread. Speaking of. I know. I asked him because there are five of them sitting on the counter at Where's home. Where's my banana bread? And I went, are you ever going to give these banana bread to anybody? And he was like, oh, I kind of forgot about them. And I'm like, so they've been sitting here and they're just going to go bad. I didn't if forget. If they haven't already gone bad. I didn't forget. There is one day coming up that I can eat that. And that is next Saturday. I don't Saturday. even know if they're good anymore. Then I don't want it. Because they've been sitting there for so long. But here's the thing. He he bakes. He did all of this shit. All out still on the counter. Like, you know when you're baking something and you're, like, pouring flour into something and it, like, comes out of the mixing bowl? Mm -hmm. You, like, clean up the counter as you're... No. He doesn't do that. So it builds and it builds until basically my entire kitchen is coated in flour and batter and... God knows what, and then he's not washing his hands in between things, and he's touching cabinets, so there's, like, dried batter on cabinets and on the fridge door, and it's everywhere. And then he proceeds every single time to ask me, what do you want? Hold on. I'm sorry. She is just... She's going to town on this. I, Rosemary is very mouthy. She's one years old. One and, one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. She's very mouthy, and um, she really is going to make this an ASMR video <laughs> with all of the... All of the slurping? All the slurping and the... Well, girl, what you doing? Okay, but he asks you, what do you want? Well, that's the thing. When the holidays were coming up, he was like, what do you want this year? And I was like, I don't want anything. And he was like, you don't want pumpkin cookies? You don't want... I'm like, nope, don't want anything. And he was like, I don't understand why you don't want anything. I'm like, it's not that I don't want the actual stuff. Like, it's You don't want to deal with the mess. I don't I don't want you to bake. Yeah. I don't want you to bake because I don't want to have to clean it up afterwards. And he yeah. always goes, I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. Yeah. And he never does. Four days from now, maybe? Mm. Or I'm going to have to clean it up? That would drive me nuts. Like, clean up as you go, man. Yeah, it makes it Especially so much... baking. It makes it so much easier. You've seen our kitchen, how it's tiny so it is. It's so tiny. There's no room. Uh-uh. Like, literally, the next... On Christmas morning... Yeah. I had nowhere to, like, prep for... Really? Meal. Yeah, I had nowhere. I literally had to do it over by where we keep Amelia's bottles and stuff. Which no. was its own separate little area. No. Because I, there was no clean counter that's space. Not work. There was no counter space at all. Young man, young, young lady. But, in, but like I'll put a pan in the oven and he'll complain that it's in the oven. I'm like, dude, check the oven before you before you preheat it. Yeah, it's Just open hard. it once. I did have to get Logan to start doing that because we have a pizza stone. And I keep that in the oven because I don't really have anywhere else to store it where it wouldn't necessarily get ruined. So 
he would be preheating the oven and he'd look at me and go, why is it taking so long for the oven to preheat? And I look at him and I have to be like, did you, did you take out the pizza stone? Cause it absorbs all the heat mm-hmm. until yeah. it gets hot enough. And then the, it stops doing that. And he was like, Oh, I didn't know it was in there. I was like, yeah, there's nowhere else for us to put it where we don't run the risk of it breaking. So you got to take that out. And then you can preheat the oven. Um, But aside from that, I mean, he's pretty good about cleaning up as he goes. But I also, if he's the one cooking, like I'm standing, I'm cleaning after him Hmm. while he's cooking. That way, once we're done eating, it's just throw the dishes in the dishwasher and we can relax. No, I can't. I can't clean up after him as we go, because if I do, he'll just be like, you're getting in the way. Get out, get out of my kitchen. You're getting in the way. And I'm like, you are making a mess is all you're doing right now is making a mess. You're not cleaning. You're making, or you're not cooking. You're making, making a, a mess. mess. <laughs> that's what, that's what, because he's like, nuts. he'll, he'll be like, you don't like my baking anymore. You don't like my cooking anymore. I was like, I don't like the mess that you make when you do it. Like... If you didn't make a mess every time you did it, and it's not like, oh, it's a pot and a pan that needs to be cleaned and like, you know, our plates and whatever. It's, he like makes a crime scene out of our kitchen with anything he's using. It's everywhere. And then sometimes I won't even find things for a little while because it'll be like a week before I go to open a certain cabinet. I'm like, what is on this cabinet? Ew. Because he, like, touched something and then just immediately touched something because he doesn't wash his hands. But even when he does wash his hands and then he goes to dry his hands, the what he'll dry his hands on will look disgusting. And I'm like, why are you using these like this? And he was like, oh, I just washed my hands. I said, if you washed your hands, the towel would be clean. There's no reason for there to be shit all over the towel because if you wash your hands correctly, there will be nothing to come off of your hands when you're drying them with a towel. Facts. Yes. That's a fact. That's also terrifying to think that he doesn't wash his hands properly. He's how old? Yes. And he doesn't know how to wash his hands? Do we need to do a tutorial for him? Tell him you gotta sing your ABCs or sing happy birthday. Twice? Right there, Rosie. Right there. Just lower it. She'll. (laughs) She's like looking at me, looking at the mic, looking at me. Okay, so this is coming out around your wedding anniversary. Day after. Day yeah. after. Yeah. So I feel like we should tell some stories from those days. What kind of stories? <laughs> we'll see where it takes us. Okay. So, uh, so Natalie was the maid of honor for my wedding. And the uh, night before my wedding, I wanted to have all the girls over at the house. Mm-hmm. So you had actually brought like a lot of the leftovers from like the bachelorette party. So there was a lot of, a lot of Taco Bell and <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for her bachelorette, I threw her a surprise bachelorette party cause she tried telling me she didn't want one. So I was like, well, we'll just do something at my house. Like we won't go anywhere. And I got like four, four Taco Bell party packs, um, which I think are like 12 packs, like packs of 12 tacos. Mm -hmm. I think it was 12 hard and 12 soft. (laughs) So 24 tacos total times four. And there were mm, six, seven, seven women, six women. I think there was only five of us. Eh, close enough. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because I still, I... I didn't add the video to your birthday montage, but uh-huh. I still have the one video of the straws oh, where Jamie yeah. was like, yeah. and then I 
came around at you who were just dying laughing. <laughs> um, Still have that. So, yeah, I, I brought all of the uh, the leftover Taco Bell for us to, to munch on because it was, you know, we had rehearsal and then we left. Yeah. On the way back to my house, my dog puked in my purse. Yeah. And then we ate leftovers and hung out all night. And then this one decided she wasn't going to sleep. I don't do well in high stress situations. So she stayed up the entire night playing The Witcher. Yes. In my living room. Yes. With Erica. Yes. Have a video from that night, too, <laughs> of Erica flicking the cap off of a pink Whitney bottle and just, and just chugging, chugging the it. rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, so in The Witcher, you like to choose Triss. Mm-hmm. I, I never chose Triss. I always choose Yennefer. And so I didn't get to see a lot of the scenes... Well, any of the scenes, actually, prior to that night Mm -hmm. that involve Geralt and Triss. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, shit, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. So you saw the lighthouse scene. I saw the lighthouse (laughs) scene and I took a video of that (laughs) shit and I sent it to her because she was asleep upstairs and I was like, damn. (laughs) Okay. Well, upstairs then. So... Uh, my cousin followed me upstairs because she was like, I'm sleeping in bed with you. And I think Lacey took the mattress, like the... Yeah, she was laying the on the floor mattress. in front of Erica yeah. and I yeah. all night. And um, so we went to bed, woke up the next morning. She rolled over, stretched, and then let out a massive fart. <laughs> and I went, oh, it's like he's here. <laughs> And then I was like, hey, let's wake everybody up downstairs. So my phone can connect to the speaker that's connected to the TV. And I can often kick off whatever it's connected to by connecting to it by Bluetooth. So the TV is connected by a hard line. But I can usually kick it off of that by forcing it onto Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And then I played drop them out (laughs) and as soon as it started i lost my shit (laughs) (laughs) it was was the the best thing is we disconnected it so it went silent now because they were still doing something i was still playing the witcher yeah so it's silent (laughs) and then i started the song and then all i heard was a unanimous laugh (laughs) from downstairs yeah so that's how my morning of my wedding started and then we got ready and you were so set on making sure that we left on time because i can never be on time to anything no and if anything this that morning was a testament to the fact that i can never get anywhere on time so i uh we yeah something will come in the way i drove megan Okay, I was maid of honor. It was my duty. And I was determined that I was going to get her there on time. She's the bride. It's her wedding day. It's important. We are in the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot because we all needed coffee and something to snack on. As we are sitting in the drive-thru waiting to order, there goes running down the street a dog and Megan and I looked at each other saw it and we're like what's going where's the owner yeah and it was a decent line yeah it was a decent line there was no owner around somebody had stopped and tried to get the dog to get in their car and the dog ran away they, like, well, let go of it. Yeah. Like, they yeah. checked the collar, they saw there was no number on it, and then they, like, let go of him, and he just, like, trotted off to the next, because it was, like, people. Yeah. More people More I can people. talk to. So, we're stuck in line. We can't do anything. She's like, we gotta try. I'm like, 
you're kind of right. We have time. We can kind of try. We'll try. We'll see. Just in case, like, there's a number, we'll call. Mm -hmm. We order munchkins and we're able to... I got wraps, too. You had wraps. We're able to coax the dog into my car with the munchkins and the wraps we were were feeding him. It was, like, at the passenger side. Yeah. And I, like, you were on your way between... Where we ordered to where to the window, and yeah. you were still kind of slow rolling, and I just opened the car door <laughs> and got out. Yeah, <laughs> to grab him, and I got him by the collar, and then we got him up into into the, my car. Then you grabbed everything, and you went and you pulled to the side, and we got him into your car, and you tied a scarf around his collar as like a leash. Yeah, because we had n- no leash and. The yeah. car. And then we were like, there's no phone number. There's nothing. He had no tags. Nothing. And he was filthy. Like, he was filthy. dirty. He looked like he hadn't eaten had anything to drink in a while. Hadn't eaten anything in a while. And there so, was a farm right there. But I was like, if he belongs to them, there's no way he'd look like this. Right. Because he had a really nice collar on and stuff. And I'm like, he's got to be missing from somewhere. Because he also right. had like stuff in his fur. Yeah. There's no way you just, like, let your dog no. be like that. So, all the girls who are in separate cars come to my car and are like, what's going on? So, we explain the situation and we're like, we're not just going to let him go. We're going to go find a vet, see if they can, like, scan him for a microchip or something. Mm-hmm. Report him missing. So And even uh, maybe just take him for us. Yeah. I drove, we drove to how many different places? We drove to multiple places and I called a few. Multiple places, and, called a few. And, and they were like, well, we won't just take a, like a stray. We won't take one. I was like, well, he's technically not a stray. He has a collar on him. So obviously he belongs to somebody. He didn't have a chip. So we couldn't get, you know, couldn't yeah. get any information. And I'm trying to explain to every person I talk to, this is my wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> like, like. I told all the girls that were at Dunkin' Donuts, go to the venue yep. because if we don't get there by a certain time, the hair and makeup will get charged a fee for not being there and yeah. being late. Yep. And I just need butts and chairs getting their hair and makeup done. Yep. So they all left and they went there. So we went to multiple places. Finally, the one place that I called, um, I was explaining this to them. They're like, well, we won't take him. And I was like, Listen, it is my wedding day. I need to figure out where I can take him or I'm just going to let him go. I'm going to open the door and I'm going to let him out. But meanwhile, I'm also like looking at him. I'm like, I would never do that. No, we, we're going to take <laughs> you like, to the wedding. We would never do that. No, we would take you with us. Yes. We nicknamed him Jethro. Yeah, we named him Jethro. So we ended up finding found a place. In country. Yeah, we, we found a place, dropped him off, and it, the the deal was, you know, if they couldn't find who he belonged to, then we would have to go get him. And so, naturally, in my speech, that's how I started it. <laughs> it was before uh, before I start. You all need to understand how the bride arrived here today, late per usual, to her own wedding. <laughs> but that, if anything, proves my point even more. Yeah, that I cannot be on time to anything, and even there are other circumstances that make sure that I am never on time to anything. Yeah. But during your speech, nobody else knew that this had happened other than the bridesmaids. Yeah. So, meanwhile, my new husband looks at me and goes, you did what now? (laughs) You did what this morning? Yeah. I'm like, I got out of a moving car to grab a dog. (laughs) (laughs) And then I proceeded to look at him and Logan and go, so... If I don't get a call, that means we have to go get him. <laughs> yep. So one of us is getting a new dog. <laughs> he was a good boy. He was a really good he boy. He just wanted love. Um, Halfway through the reception, I got the call that they found the owners. Oh. And that he was safe. So somebody must have had reported him missing. They did. Yeah. 
They did. Yeah, mm. your wedding day was. Uh, she she just bumped it. Your wedding day was. That was that was a, a fun way to start. Yeah. I uh, woke up. Uh, with rosemary. Snuggled up against me. That that's how I woke up on my wedding day. It was great. <laughs> Say Rose. She's just chilling. She's now. just chilling. What else happened at your wedding? Anything? Oh boy. Not um, really. I mean, it was for the most part. No, it went off pretty well for the most part. Yeah. Um, that was like the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. Because we had, we had like an outdoor thing. Yeah. We did like the outdoor, like the barn door kind of thing. And it was fall themed. And our reception was in a barn. People got heavily overserved really fast. And ran out of alcohol really quick. Because apparently bartender really didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Which was, Cause like, I, I had gotten, I think it was the apple cider mimosa, and I was, yeah. I took one sip of it and went, oh, yeah. I don't think so, I haven't eaten all day. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, like, I, the photographer, she was fantastic. Yeah, she had things, you had a great photographer. She kept that whole thing going. Yeah. And, um... She grabbed our glasses and ran over and was like, what do you want to drink? And she got our drinks. And I thought it was strong, but I thought, you it know, was for clearly my room. glass said Mrs. on it. And yeah. he said Mr. So I thought, I'm like, oh, she was probably like, we're just going to give her a little extra. Um, didn't realize that, like, everyone else was also being served the same way. And they were like, we ran out of alcohol. And we're like, we did the math on this. How did you run out of alcohol? Because, like, we did the math on, like, per shots and stuff. So, there's no way that this stuff was taking, like, there's no way we ran out that quickly. And from what I heard from people later, and some of these people are alcoholics, that, um, yeah, these were strong. These were very strong drinks. So, clearly, she did not know what she was doing. No. So, Yeah. She did not. And it was also freezing cold. It was freezing cold that day. So it ended quite early. Yeah. Because everyone was freezing and we were supposed to have heaters. And then they were like, oh, we didn't start the heaters, even though we had asked about them. And that was a whole thing. And uh, so then it got really cold. So then by eight o'clock, everyone was like, we're leaving because it's freezing. And we're like... I'm fine with that because I'm exhausted. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was exhausted at the end of our wedding, too. Which was, I mean, surprising to me. Like, I didn't expect because I was like, oh, what do I got it? No. You did a lot that day. Yeah. There was a lot of running around. Yeah. Because, I mean, it started at the house, but it started at the house at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. Actually, before that, because I think before Brian and I got there at, like, 5, and you I were was up. already up at, I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because Brian made breakfast, mm -hmm. and then everybody had to start getting ready. But from there, we went to... The estate. The estate. From the estate... To the church, mm -hmm. from the church, back to the estate. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a lot of running around. Yeah. And it was cold. And windy. And windy. <laughs> a lot like today. Yes. It's super windy outside right now. I can hear it hitting the house. Yeah. We had a good time. We did have a good time. You and Tom definitely had a good time. You guys were funny. Yeah. But, no, it was a good time. We were trying our best. Yeah. Logan was absolutely terrified. He was going to vomit everywhere. <laughs> All <laughs> over me. <laughs> it's like, great. <laughs> it was a lot to remember. 
Uh, it wasn't that difficult for me because I was used to it. I had been to Episcopal services. Like, I knew the deal. Mm-hmm. But I knew for everybody else. It was like... It was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Plus, plus, the other thing is, they were taking, oh my god, your photographer had me cracking up. He had he everybody had cracking, up. cracking up. He was the only thing, thank you, by the way, he was the only thing stopping me from bawling like a baby. He was it. He was the... He was the only thing that stopped me. You were still me. crying. I was still I got crying. quite a few pictures there of you crying. There were still pictures of me sitting Shit. in that pew crying. Yeah. And it didn't help that I was eight months pregnant. So no, I was you were already super emotional. hormonal and emotional. But watching him was so hilarious. He was running all over the place I in looked, the church. He was behind Logan at one point in that little cubby back there. Yep. And I was like, oh, like look at him over there. And then all of a sudden, like, literally less than 30 seconds later, he's at the opposite end of the church. Yeah. Up in the top. And I'm like, how did you get, get there? there? Yeah. And then he comes running around. But he wasn't, it wasn't like he would just, like, walk up. He was running. Yes. So he would, like, run and he would, like, stop. <laughs> and, and take pictures. pictures. And, and he crawled, like, down at the bottom of the stairs. I know. So <laughs> on either side of the church up by, up at the altar... There are doorways that'll take you out of the chapel. And that's how he was getting around was because they go all the way. It goes all the way around the back Mm -hmm. of the the chapel and to the other side. And I, at one point, saw him. He was looking and I was standing there and I saw him over there pop his head out with the camera. And I just looked at him and I went... (laughs) And he got a picture of me poking my head around Logan, smiling. <laughs> he cracked me up. Our, our, our uh, reverend was trying really hard not to giggle. Because <laughs> I know he saw it out of the corner of his eye he and saw so me. <laughs> and then so Logan funny. looked at me and he was like, what are you in it? Then I explained it, but yeah. Yeah, but I love the fact that, like, I, like... We all saw it happening. Yeah. So, like, I looked over at Tom, and then I'd be like, and he'd look, <laughs> and then we would all be, like, trying so hard not to laugh. Yeah. Because it was just so funny. Yeah. Especially when he was, like, down at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Like, yeah, crawling. crawling. <laughs> yeah. Every, that is the one thing everybody took away from the ceremony was him. Because I swear, like, I would see him pop out from somewhere, and he'd yeah. just literally pop out. And every time you do it, I, I in my head, I was like, I'm Batman. <laughs> every time. Yeah. I saw him pop out and then he'd be like running somewhere else. Yeah. Well, that's, that was the thing. My, my dad, I think it was, looked at me and was like, where did you find him? Because he, I have never seen a photographer do the most. <laughs> yeah, he really did. People. He really he had did. more energy than anyone Anything. else. Ever. And he was up at the same time. And he had more energy than everyone else. And then after that... He was running around. But then after that, after, you know, the, the ceremony, we get to the reception and everything, whatever. And I finally, I looked at him and I was like, Clyde, you're also a guest. Because he was a friend of ours. I was like, you're also a guest. Like, please relax a little bit. You've been running around like crazy all day. Like, chill. Yeah. You know, eat your dinner with everybody. Relax. You're good. You're fine. I don't need pictures of people eating. Yeah. And he was like, okay. So he did that. And then the dance floor opened up. And our uh, our, our playlist for our wedding was pretty good. And we had like Silk Sonic on there, Bruno Mars, and all kinds. As soon as Silk Sonic came on, this man was on the dance floor. He was tearing it up yeah Yeah, he he was was just going for it and i'm pretty sure logan's mom has videos of him dancing it was really funny i hope she does because he oh my god he was hilarious yeah it was really good he was so funny yeah and uh i still i I think i remember saying to him too like you have so So much much energy energy. yeah it makes sense that he was at one point he was like and yeah. I like, finally sat down and I'm like, dude, 
How do you do it? How? Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm exhausted standing here. Not even in heels. I wore flats because of how pregnant I was. Yeah. And I was exhausted. Yeah. Just from existing that day. You should have seen my foot. Oh, you're... I'm sure that was horrible. I broke my foot two days before the wedding. Literally was, the day we were leaving. Well, the night before the day we were leaving. Oh. Because you yeah, had like it done was it the, that night. The night before. And the, then we got yeah. there in the morning because we had to leave. And I guys. told you I broke my foot. I couldn't walk right. It was it was a nightmare. I was absolutely terrified on how I was going to walk down the aisle in my shoes. And like I didn't think I would be able to wear heels. And um it was like all black and blue and it wasn't like, you know, minor. It was up where your like toes connect to the foot mm-hmm. that it was broken. And there was nothing that a doctor could do. Like they would just tape my toes so that they didn't move around, you know? After that, I I successfully stayed in heels from 9.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And I was on my feet, dancing, walking down the aisle. I think it was all of the adrenaline. Between that and the alcohol. And the alcohol, <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't feel it. And I took my shoes off once we, when we were changing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even look. Because I didn't think to look. So I didn't see my foot until I went to get in the shower back at the house. My whole foot. It looked like Mr. Deed's foot. <laughs> it was just nothing but this huge ass black and blue bruise. And it hurt so bad. I'm sure it did. So bad. It hurts your feet to just be in heels. It hurts them even more when, like, you have a broken foot. Yeah. In heels. You were already limping in, like, normal shoes. Yeah. Like, when we went to Sam's and everything before I couldn't walk. You were, yeah, you were already limping. I couldn't walk. And, and that's why when we got back to the house, I was like, lay down. Yeah. Here's a bag of ice. Don't move. Yeah. I There's gotta nothing that. you need to do for the rest of the night before we leave for the rehearsal. Yeah. Don't move. Yeah. I, and then I looked at my dad when we got to the rehearsal and I was like, so um, I'm going to need extra stability from you because I broke my foot. And he was like, you what? And I was like, I broke my foot yesterday. <laughs> it was great. It was a good time. Another thing that happened no, at my wedding. About your cell phone. Yeah. Um, my cell phone got left at the church. And I had everybody at the estate running around looking for it. Um, and we couldn't find it. Like I was trying to like do the find my iPhone thing and everything. Megan was was calling calling my phone. Somebody answered the phone, my phone at the church. And Megan was like, your phone's it's at the church. Yeah. That's all I got out of that phone call was that it was at the church because she was trying to talk to me, but you guys kept hitting the find my iPhone thing. So that was blaring as she was trying. And that's why I was yelling. I was like, stop doing that. Cause I'm like trying to talk to the girl. Yeah. And all I heard is you left your phone at the church. And that's all I heard from that. And then she hung up. And then I kept calling it again after I stopped pressing yeah. the button and nobody would answer it. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Great. So uh, then I proceeded to grab the keys to my car because I was like, people are there. Like, I'm not just going to leave it there. And uh, Megan was like, well, we're in Center City, Philadelphia. Like, you're not going by yourself. Yeah. She's eight months pregnant. Yeah. So then I climb in so her car. So she gets in the car. Because I refuse to let her drive into Philly by herself as I am extremely pregnant. Yeah. And my husband goes, no, you're not. And I go, yes, I am. So then he's like, then I'm following both of you. Yeah. So then he went and got our car and he followed us. And he was so mad at me after that. Yeah. 
He was so angry. He was like, do you know? He's like, you were eight months pregnant. Two women driving into center Philly at night. And I was like, yeah. I was like, but she was going to go regardless. And I wasn't going to let her go alone. I was like, there's no stopping her. I was like, her, God forbid, her new husband wasn't trying to stop her. Because he knew (laughs) that that there was no way he was going to. He did try. And I looked at him and I was like, no. You don't understand how royally pissed off I am right now. We will discuss this when I get back. I'm going. Someone is there right now. I'm going. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to take my phone. I wasn't going to take anything. No, yeah. And I was told, no, bring it. We'll take care of it. I was not the one that told you that. No. Just for... You weren't. weren't. But, regardless, (laughs) it doesn't matter. Um, So, when somebody came, unlocked the door, got the phone, the guy was super sweet, they were really nice. It was just... Really, by chance, that he happened to still be there. Yeah. Which was nice. Mm -hmm. And, um... Because apparently whoever was there answering that phone, that was an AA meeting. Yeah. That was going on where your phone was. Yep. So... And it was... was Interrupted that. (laughs) Oops. What was really funny, too, was that you left and I called... I, I was curious... Because I was, like, right next to the doors where my phone was. Mm -hmm. It connected to the car, and I was able to call Logan. And so I called Logan, and I was on the phone with him while I was waiting for this guy to come back so that, like, I wasn't just alone. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, you got your phone back? And I was like, no, I'm currently in the car outside of the building that it's in, and it connected. So I figured I would call you so you know that I'm safe. (laughs) (laughs) And then we proceeded to sit there and and talk for however long it took for that guy to get back. Yeah. That was like the one... That and the cake. Oh, yeah. Were the two things that just really, really got me that day. But then again, like the phone at the end of the day, whatever. But the cake, though? Come on. No, it was so off. It was so wrong. (laughs) On so many levels, too. It's not like the color was just wrong. Even though, like, that was the biggest, because it was... And everybody knew. (laughs) She didn't pick that. No! Of course not! No, because when I walked down there... They had it on display already. So we beat you guys to the reception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to go drop my stuff off. I'm going to get a freaking drink, maybe a snack because I need to eat. And we just started walking around. And I walked past it because it was in its little cubby that they put it in. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Okay. And I just like kept walking. I was like, that looks... Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I really think that they just forgot. Because I, I told Logan, like, I never got a, like, confirmation from them. Mm-hmm. I never got any form of communication from them. After I paid them, because I paid them extra to stencil on the middle layer. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be 360 all the way around done. Okay. Okay. I, after I paid them to do that, I never heard anything from them ever again. They probably, that's probably what it is. And they probably just threw it together last minute because they forgot about it. And that would make sense as to why like you're kind of missing another flavor. It's not the right color. Well, it's not the right color. Don't know if I'm missing another flavor because we still have the top tier of the cake in the freezer. What I don't understand is if you're making the second flavor, why would you make the second flavor the top layer? Right. Why wouldn't you make that? Why wouldn't you do it in the middle? You know what happens with the top layer of a wedding cake. 
Yeah. Why would you make that the only layer that has the second flavor in it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and like the thing too was you should have explained or, you know, told me I'm not going to be able to get that color. Yeah. For the cake. It was supposed to be a dark navy blue. What, what, what color would you say it was? Like a turquoise. Turquoise. A lot of people told me Cookie Monster. It just, it wasn't the right yeah, color. It was, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't the, right the right color, color blue. And I feel like if you weren't able to get that color and like you were trying to do it, it wasn't like, just text me. You have my number. And you know what yeah. I would have said? That's fine. Just leave it white. It would look really pretty white with all the flowers and the, the gold stenciling. Mm-hmm. But no. Yeah. I don't know. And then they posted it too on their Instagram and shit. Like you hit your head three it. times. All right, next. Sent a, sent a nude photo to the wrong person. Unfortunately, have done that. <laughs> I I can uh, one up it though that I've done it way worse because uh, we were in the era of Snapchat. Yeah, I'm still in the era. Of, I still use Snapchat. Yeah, I don't use it very often anymore. I don't either. But I used it a lot, and that was the only way that I sent them. Yeah, because they disappeared. Mm-hmm. 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 I accidentally posted one of my story one time. <laughs> I caught it, like, pretty much immediately, and I don't know if I'm really the one that caught it or if it was my ex that was like, hey, because I was sending them, obviously, to him, and I immediately went <coughs> and deleted it, but I have no idea whether or not anybody saw it, because I deleted it right away, but... <laughs> Never posted one of my story. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, I... What a, that was an accidental send. That was an accidental send to my story on Snapchat. And these were back in the, where you, like, you would set a timer. So, like, somebody could see the picture for, like, one second. Yeah. And those were the best, where you'd send, a really, like, a picture for one second. And they did not, like, the guys didn't have enough time to screenshot it. Yeah. <laughs> that was the early days of teasing on TikTok on uh on Snapchat. You could still set a timer. Yeah. But back you, there was no inf- like infinite like yeah, infinite time yeah. Mm-hmm. setting. Like you had to set ten a timer. Second, it was I like was 10 max. seconds or 1 second. Like anything in between. Was it a good selfie? I don't really remember, honestly. Oh. I was this would have been I think I was still in high school. I was either in high school or it was, like, college. Freshman year of college or something like that. It might have been, it might have been college. Because, I, I mean, when he moved down south, I sent him a, a lot. Because he was gone. Yeah. Woken up with puke on my face? <laughs> you have? I don't think I have ever. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. I've woken up and had to puke. <coughs> but not with, not with puke on my face already. <laughs> this is so gross. It's too. very specific. This is really gross. Okay. I woke up actively puking on myself. <laughs> <laughs> Logan and I went out to dinner. We went to Brew Daddy's. And had, it was my first time there. I had way too much to drink. Way too many beers. The problem was that instead of getting a flight like a normal person, I was just getting full beers and drinking them to try them. Rookie mistake. Could not lay down in bed. 
okay, laid down on the floor next to the bed and fell asleep. Thought everything was fine. Out of nowhere, I just woke up. <laughs> and I was just puking all over myself. Oh my God. <laughs> it was... <laughs> So I got up and I made it. I finished puking. <laughs> and I just sat in the shower. I turned the water on. I sh- I got a shower and then I I did my I cleaned it up and I could not fall back to sleep or even be in our bedroom. I had to open the windows. I was gagging because I hate the smell of puke. I hate looking at puke, anything involving it. And so what I did was I put on my big comfy. It was completely naked underneath because I got a shower and didn't have the energy to put on actual clothes. Got Put my comfy on, turn off the lights, Went into our walk-in closet, shut the door, and fell asleep on the floor. Oh my God. <laughs> our walk-in closet. Because it didn't smell like puke. <laughs> oh my god. The best nights are the ones that end up in the shower. On the shower floor. <laughs> on the shower that floor. Was, that was Florida. When I went to Florida and yeah. I went on that bar crawl with my family. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Not I bad. know. Your husband was sending me he videos. He should have left me on the floor. Freaking floor. Yeah, I told I him this. He was, I wasn't going to leave my li- my wife on the floor. And I was like, I was there the for a reason. I, I was there slept. because it was the most comfortable. I wasn't super dizzy. Yeah. You put me in a nice, comfy, fluffy bed. And immediately I didn't feel well. And I, I was throwing up. And between that, I ended up crawling into the shower, sitting in the shower. And I threw up a few times in the shower. And yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I have spent many a night passed out on the floor of a bathroom. A couple of nights passed out in a bathtub, <laughs> a drained, empty bathtub. Like, I just climbed in it and laid in there and fell asleep. <laughs> Those are the best. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Been too drunk to stay awake during sex. <laughs> I did this. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> I have not done this because alcohol I does things to me. But I please two explain. Two stories, okay? Please so tell. The first one, we went to Texas Roadhouse. I got two hurricanes. I remember this story. Or maybe it was the cowboy one. Maybe I remember it was the cowboy story. ones. All right, with the kickers. Yeah. Okay. Did you get the Patron? Drank, yes. Drank a lot. Rosie. <laughs> Drank a lot. She keeps hitting my microphone. Drank a lot. Came home. Left a trail of clothing yep. to the bedroom. Yep. All right. Immediately, husband's like, this is great. This is... This is great. This is great. I should do this more so often. So he... Yeah. So he was picking up the clothes on his way. He got to the bedroom. Ready. He was ready. He said, it took him a minute because he had to let the dogs out and everything. Then he gets up to the bedroom and I'm already passed out. I'm already <laughs> asleep. <laughs> already asleep. And I was like, I hit that peak of like being drunk where it was just now you're just, tired. Now I'm tired. I was yep. You had me. You had the the horny me for a little bit. Now I just tired, and I passed out. And then, um, I don't even remember when this was, but it was not recent. Uh, I drank like a bottle of wine, and I think it was one of those big ones, like the. Pink Moscato, like the really big ones. I can't drink that shit anymore. And and this would have been like years ago. Okay. This would have yeah, been like yeah. probably like two years ago. This was yeah. before Amelia. Yeah. I, this is. I don't even remember. But um. So. We were like actively in the middle of it. And, and you fell asleep. And then, yeah, and it, and then we were like switching positions or something and he like rolled over and i like rolled over and i just like out <laughs> he like turned to me and he was like are you and then he realized that i was asleep and he i could literally the next morning he was like do you remember anything from last night and i was like no what and he was like 
you fell asleep while we were having sex. <laughs> like, if that's not a hit to a man's ego. <laughs> and I was like, I was that drunk. You stopped what we were doing. You rolled over. You gave me time in between. I passed out. And the time wasn't even a lot. It was maybe like a minute or two. <laughs> I passed out. And I was out. I've never done that. Made a sex tape. I feel like this look is enough. <laughs> we don't have to get into it. <laughs> Just don't look I, through my I, husband's I phone. I will hide in my shell. Um, it wasn't necessarily like a tape. It was recorded. Yeah. So I guess like that counts, but mm -hmm. um, wasn't for anything doesn't even exist anymore has been permanently deleted it was mainly for uh his uh benefit to remember uh i think most of them are for his benefit yeah um and i you know i had this conversation with brian when we were talking about it because oh, sorry because brian has a new one now and uh, <clears throat> a new one mm -hmm. yeah he, yeah he likes to, to do that um and he was talking about it and I was like, listen, buddy. I was like, buddy old pal, <laughs> buddy old pal, <laughs> girls don't watch porn. We read it. Yeah. Okay. I was like, so don't like, he's going on about how like great it is. And he's like, it's even better when it can be like my own wife that I'm watching and not some random. And I'm like. Girl, I don't understand the hype to it because I don't watch it. I read it like a fucking lady. <laughs> That's right. Like a lady. <laughs> thanks for coming to our TED Talk. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Thanks, Rose. Um... Do you want to say the outro? Do you want to do it? That was a tongue in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. I guess that's all we got. All right. Well, see you next week. Bye.